Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this video I will show you how to perform DFT plus U calculations in RSPT. But before we start, let me go through the rationale behind this approach. So when we perform DFT calculations with solving approximately the Schrodinger equation, the approximation here is such that the electrons become effectively decoupled. We calculate self-consistently effective one electron potential which the electrons experience. And although it's a very complicated object and it contains information about all other electrons in the system, it's still a single electron potential. And since there is no explicit interaction between electrons, we can say that they are effectively decoupled. And this picture works really well for most of materials, but for certain class of systems it struggles. Let me show you a classical example of nickel oxide. It's a transition metal oxide, and you can see here its crystal structure. Nickel atoms are surrounded by oxygens, which form an octahedron. And from experiment we know that this material is an antiferromagnetic insulator. It has a gap of about 4 electron volts, and the magnetic moment per nickel atom is roughly 2 Bohr magneton. If we now perform simple DFT calculation, we will get the following density of states. So here on the right hand side I show you the projected density of states for nickel 3D and oxygen 2P states. Zero energy here indicates fermi level, so you immediately can see that the material is predicted to be metallic, because there are states at the fermi level. You can also notice that nickel 3D orbitals form very localized states next to fermi level, so their density of states are quite narrow and sharp. At the same time, we can also see that they hybridize quite strongly with oxygen 2p states. In particular for nickel EG orbitals, we can see very pronounced bonding states at around 6 electron volts below fermi level and antibonding states close to fermi level. So the situation is quite typical for materials where certain orbitals show atomic character. Like in the case of nickel oxide, nickel D states are relatively localized and therefore independent particle picture fails for those. And in order to correct this behavior, DFT plus U approach was suggested. The idea is simple. We take our material and for selected set of orbitals we explicitly take into account strong Coulomb repulsion between electrons. For example, this is our material, but we only pick up nickel D states and we consider interactions of such form. We have U, number of D electrons up times number of D electrons down. So, as soon as there is more than one electron occupying the orbital, you can see that they will start to repel each other, and this repulsion gives rise to the energy gap. So it costs energy for electrons to jump from one side to another. So now we can write a total energy in the following way. We have original DFT functional. We add the U term and we also have to subtract the so-called double counting correction. So where is it coming from? If you look at the DFT functional, it contains all these terms, and the last two terms describe the electron-electron interactions. The first one is called the Hartree potential, and the second one is so-called exchange correlation functional, which takes into account all other effects. And this is the expression for LDA functional, which is the most commonly used and one of the simplest ones. And here we can see that the exchange correlation energy depends on the density of electrons to the power of four thirds. So what we can say? First of all, in our DFT functional, we already have electron-electron interactions taken into account in some way. But now we say that for selected set of orbitals, we would like to treat electron-electron interactions in a different way. 
using the hover tutor. So what we have to do now is to take the contribution of these correlated orbitals, such as transition metal D states, and we have to subtract it from this functional. But the problem is that, as you can see, the density doesn't enter linearly in these expressions. So we cannot simply disentangle the contributions from non-correlated and correlated orbitals. However, there are even more complications. In fact, these calculations can be performed in two different ways, and historically they were referred to as LDA plus U and LSDA plus U. In practice, the functional doesn't matter. Uh, one can do DFT plus U calculations using GGA, meta GGA, functionals, etc. But these names highlight the difference whether your starting point is spin polarized or unpolarized. So in case of LDA plus U, we start from unpolarized density and we allow the magnetism to arise purely from the Hubbard U term. Historically, this was the way how DFT plus U was originally proposed. However, what's more common nowadays is to start from spin polarized density, where we already have both charge and magnetization densities. We have a double counting term, which is also spin polarized. So, in fact, it's supposed to compensate for magnetism, which arise at the DFT level. And again, it reintroduces magnetism from the U part. There are pros and cons with the both approaches. LDA plus U provides a little more clean picture, since magnetism is added in a controlled way. One advantage is that the double counting is unpolarized. The drawback is that other orbitals where we don't apply U, they are intrinsically non-magnetic. In case of LSDA plus U, the biggest problem is that the double counting becomes spin polarized. And uh, there is no guarantee that the spin polarization of a double counting will exactly compensate for the intrinsic stoner I in your functional. On the other hand, it's a little more versatile and it's easier to use and also it provides better values for magnetic anisotropy, for example. So for some pragmatic reasons, LSDA plus U approach is nowadays more widespread. To know more about the differences between the two approaches, you can read these two papers.